So everyone's heard the phrase that God is infinitely just and infinitely merciful, but I would f definitely find contention in this in the Old Testament where God was a vengeful God. Uh, Torah scholars and uh, Christian scholars who have studied the Old Testament both would agree that the God of the Old Testament is a vengeful God. And so, but the idea of vengeance and justice are very different ones, and they cannot, they're very close, but they're not the same thing. And so I would say that if you try and match up the New Testament God, who is very justice, just and very merciful, and you try and match him with the Old Testament God, then you're just going to find an incompatibility. Um, the most glaring um, example of this is the book of Job, where um, God and Satan have an argument and about um, the fact that Job, uh, being God's most uh, devoted follower, would follow God even if uh, things in Job's life wasn't going as well. Uh, Satan said, he's only following you because things are going well. And God said, no, he's following me because I'm God. And he knows that. And so God uh, took away all the good things from uh, Job, and Job still believed. Uh, he and Satan, and then God uh, let Satan have a go at Job, and Job still believed that God was the highest, but then he questioned God, and God came down and said, how, can, how dare you question me? I'm God. Um, you're, I've been here since the universe. I, I shaped the universe. You're, you, you can't possibly know what I'm doing. And so, and then Job kind of acknowledges, yep, you're God. I'm not supposed to, I mean, you're a higher power than I am. Um, and then God eventually gives him back everything that uh, he took away from him and cures him of all this stuff. Um, so, but I would say that's not just. You don't, uh, a test on that magnitude is not just in any way. So God in that sense is not infinitely just and infinitely merciful. So that's my point about that. The idea that God is a monotheist, he's the only God, one and only, I find contention with that because that elimin that, that takes away all of the um, other people's that takes away everything. The idea that God is the one and only. I know I don't really believe in God, um, but I don't disbelieve in God at the same time. Um, if I did believe in a God, um, if I took the time to study into it a little bit more, I'd probably believe in a pantheistic idea where there are many gods. Um, are, uh, there are many gods. It's basically the modern Hindu idea uh, where there are many gods, uh, but they are all faces of the same one oneness. They are all bits and pieces of the of the oneness that is the that is God. And so I find that and so what they would contend in the modern uh, modern Hindu scholars is that Christianity, Islam and basically the God of Abraham is yet another face of the one God uh, of the the ultimate God, the pan the pantheistic God. Uh, as is all of their gods and any god that has ever existed or has ever been worshipped. They're all God, but they're all the many faces of the same. And so, but Christianity doesn't seem to, like, recognize this, neither does Islam, neither does Judaism. Uh, they all say, no, 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 we have the one and only God, he is our God, there is no another. Um, so I find contention with this simply because... Um, how are people who have never heard about Christianity supposed to follow the one true God, provided that he is the one true God? Um, a lot of people say, well, in this day and age, everyone's heard about Christianity. Well, number one, that's not true, but let's take it back a little bit further. What about in the 1800s? And then people would say, well, um, there's always a way for these people to find Christianity. And then I would say, fine, if you want to take that argument, uh, what about in the generation just after Jesus, is, Jesus died? Um, Paul had made it to India. No, not Paul, sorry. Uh, John had made it to, uh, to India. And that's where he was spreading Jesus, Jesus Christ's teachings. He was the farthest one to go. He, he had gone the farthest east at that time. Uh, so my question is, what about a Japanese man? Um, at that time, he, uh, it is entirely possible for a Japanese man to have been born after Jesus' death and died, uh, before someone, someone, um, of Jesus' teachings had made it over there. So, th um, therefore, he would never have an opportunity to have heard about Jesus' teachings. So, if this man was a just man, does he get into heaven? I've never got a full answer on that. And if you would like to uh, answer that question, um, please put it in the comments. I would love to hear about this.
And finally, that Jesus is the Son of God. I do not contend that Jesus did not exist. There's quite a bit of archaeological proof that Jesus did exist, more than for a lot of other uh, uh, historical figures. Some atheists would say, well, maybe he's just an amalgam of a lot of other things, but it's not likely uh, Jesus probably did exist. Um, but uh, there is no possible way to prove that he is the one, and, the, the one and only true Son of the one and only true God. Um, and so I would contend that is the biggest uh, dropping point for me. I do believe in, uh, I like to believe in a higher power. Um, I have my own teachings, which do not uh, necessarily regard God in any way, shape, or form. They do not acknowledge the idea. They do not disacknowledge the idea. They don't talk about it. It's not important to us. Uh, we're looking for other things. So, but if there is a God, number one, I, I've already mentioned that I don't believe that it's only one and only. And number two, there's no way to prove that Jesus is the only Son of God. Um, why I say this is because um, his disciples would have been very um, affectionate towards him. Um, and so and so would a lot of the uh, Jewish uh, people of the time, which disregards all of the four Gospels. Um, why I say the Jewish people of the time is because Luke, I believe, was a historian and did not actually have direct ties to any of the other any of the disciples. And so uh, at that time, um, he what he did was a, he was a historian. I'm, once again, I'm not entirely sure this is Luke. I'm pretty sure it's Luke, but if it's not, I know one of the guys who wrote the gospel was a historian, and the way he wrote his account was by interviewing eyewitnesses. And so, but the Jewish people at the time would have really loved him because he, uh, I mean, he, he, he was for them. And he was trying to right the wrongs, and so even um, some of them might have seen them seen him as a prophet, maybe not the son of God, but a prophet nonetheless. And so um, Luke could have misinterpreted that into him being um, him being the son of God. Besides which, uh, Mark had already come out, and so the book of Mark had already been written and um, distributed, and so he could have been drawing on those ideas. Actually, um, it's been proven that a lot of um, everything but John. Uh, Mark and uh, Luke and Matthew, I believe, come uh, have drew on the Book of Mark as um, inspiration, more or less. Um, so the idea of Son of God can not necessarily be proved. Um, so that's those are my points against Christianity. Um, thank you very much for watching.